Hello, I'm Adam, and if you're new here, then I am a doctor in atmospheric physics from the University of Oxford, which is basically climate science, and now I am a science communicator and science journalist. I genuinely believe that talking about climate change is one of the most important things we can do to stop it. The louder the volume of the conversation about climate change, the clearer it is to politicians that they need to do something to stop it. And a lot of celebrities have taken that to heart using their huge platforms to try and raise the issue of climate change. Now, some of them do a better job on that than others. And so today I'm gonna to break down five, I think five uh, celebrity takes on climate change, um, explain maybe what they're trying to get at and give them a grade for their performance. Okay, so why don't we make a start with <laughs> some low hanging fruit with, uh, with Jaden Smith. So let's see what Jaden Smith has to say about climate change. This next song is really important to me because as I've just been getting older and older, I'm just feeling the summers have just been getting hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter <laughs> and warmer and warmer and warmer. And this is something that we really need to pay attention to as a community and be aware and know that these have been the hottest summers ever recorded in human history. And we have to know <laughs> that. And we have to understand our environmental impact on this earth and really make a difference. So much time is fun to fall in love. Okay, so that's Jaden Smith's effort um, to talk about climate change seriously. It really sounds like he's someone who's not done the homework at all. Uh, for one thing, uh, it's not even clear when he's saying it's getting hotter and hotter and warmer and warmer, whether he's suggesting that's a bad thing or not. It's like he's heard of global warming, but no one's told him that it's something that's bad or something to be celebrated. The, the only thing he says is that people should be more more aware. He doesn't tell them aware of what or what they should do. This was at a climate rally as well, so I'm pretty sure people were aware already. The only thing you could say was a bit scientific about that was he's saying these last summers have been the hottest we've ever seen. Um, that video was uh, recorded in 2019, I think, and um, at that point, the last four summers... Um, globally were the hottest summers globally ever recorded. I would be tempted to give him an F though for this performance because it really seems like he didn't bother to do his homework. I do find the song Summertime in Paris to be quite a bop though and so <laughs> that pushes him up just a little bit. We're going to give Jaden a D- minus for that effort. Next up we have, okay, very very big change in tone. Now we have Harrison Ford. Okay, let's see what Harrison has to say. Because today, the destruction of nature accounts for more global emissions than all the cars and trucks in the world. Okay, I don't think this is true. Um, so uh, in terms of the emissions from land use change, versus the emissions from road traffic. Uh, the sources I've checked um, suggest that road traffic emits more than land use changes. Um, now, those are difficult things to quantify. The emissions from land use changes have a lot of uncertainty in them. You know, it's not just like counting emissions coming from, um, from an exhaust or from a power plant. But I think taken at face value, it's not quite true what he's saying, but at the same time, uh, emissions from land use changes are very significant and often not spoken about. So I am pleased he's speaking about them. We can put solar panels on every house. We can turn every car into an electric vehicle. But as long as Sumatra burns, we will have failed. Now, I guess I think that's true, right? Um, so in order to stop climate change, we need to get to net zero emissions. So overall, humanity emitting zero greenhouse gases. So we can be emitting some, so long as we have some things which off that, offset that to absorb it. Um, now, uh, that means if we fix everything, like we have solar panels, we have electric cars, but we're still... Uh, uh, removing trees, we're still um, having these land use changes which emit, uh, emit greenhouse gases, then yes, the world will still be warming. Okay, let's see what he says next. It is, at this time, the only feasible solution for absorbing carbon on a global scale. 
Okay, so here he's saying that um, protecting and restoring forests is the only solution um, to absorbing carbon dioxide on large scales. I guess I would say this is true. So there are different ideas for absorbing carbon dioxide on large scales. One is to grow trees um, which absorb carbon dioxide, to then um, burn those trees but capture the carbon dioxide released and bury it underground. That's not really been proven on scales. There are also um, certain machines, basically, that um, are designed to suck carbon dioxide out of the air. They've also not been shown to work at scale, even though um, there is some, some promising evidence. I think it is kind of fair to say that protecting the natural environment and restoring the natural environment is the only thing we really, really know for sure would absorb carbon dioxide at large scales. Probably not at sufficient scales that we would eventually need, but still at large, large global scales. Stop giving power to people who don't believe in science, or worse than that, pretend they don't believe in science for their own self-interest. I mean, what can I say? I 100% agree with that statement. Um, it's so frustrating to hear elected officials just deny things which are just really basic science. For example, that the world is warming, that that's almost, a, almost exactly 100% caused by humans, um, and that the cause of that is emissions of greenhouse gases. That those least responsible will bear the greatest costs. So this is actually a really, really important point. Um, we like to say when we talk about climate change that everyone will um, be affected by climate change. And that's true, but not everyone is going to be affected by climate change equally. The people who are the worst off will be the worst hit. The people who have contributed the least will be hit the hardest. And um, I think it's really important for someone who is actually very rich, very powerful, to point out that... Um, people like him aren't going to be the worst affected. It's the poorest who will be the worst affected. Let's turn off our phones, let's roll up our sleeves, and let's kick this monster's ass. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, it's Harrison Ford saying, let's kick this monster's ass about climate change. How can you not love that? But I would say Harrison Ford did a really good job um, there. I think there are a couple of things where I don't, quite 100% think he, he got the messaging right, but I would give him, I think I'd give him a solid, a solid B, you know? I think he said some of the most important things he could say and drew attention to some issues that are often under-discussed when we talk about climate change. Okay, now next up we have, uh, we have Beyonce. Uh, let's see how Beyonce fares. Natural disasters don't discriminate. They don't see if you're an immigrant, black or white. We're all in this together. So this is actually the kind of counterpoint to what Harrison Ford was saying. Beyonce saying um, natural disasters don't discriminate. And in a sense, that's true. I mean, a hurricane doesn't care um, whether you're poor or rich. But hurricanes happen in society and uh, society does discriminate. Um, if you're rich, then you can move out the way of a hurricane. Maybe you can move country, you can, you can move in land as the seas rise. If you're poor and your life is a struggle, your life's on the edge, and then a natural disaster hits, then, you know, that can push your life over the edge. It can break your livelihood. It can end your life in extreme cases. So while I appreciate this, we're all in this together message, I think it's like a message with good intentions. Ultimately, I think it's more truthful to say what Harrison Ford said, which is um, the poorest will be hit the hardest. The effects of climate change are playing out around the world every day. Just this past week, we've seen devastation from the monsoon in India, an 8.1 earthquake in Mexico, and multiple catastrophic hurricanes. Okay, so on the one hand, I think it's really important to draw the link between, uh, between climate change and extreme weather events, and that's something that uh, we're more and more frequently doing. And um, the language she uses, I think, is really good in that um, she's not saying that climate change caused these events. It's just the implication that climate change was an influence on these events, which is absolutely the case, um, that climate change influences these kinds of events in general. But 
uh, one of those events could not be influenced as far as I'm aware by climate change and that of course is earthquakes. Um, I don't know of any mechanism by which uh, climate change would influence earthquakes. So although earthquakes can't be caused by climate change, tsunamis can be made worse by climate change. Still though, I, I don't think what Beyonce was, <laughs> was saying was about tsunamis. We have to be prepared for what comes next. So okay, and then just that very short snippet, we have to be prepared for what comes next. I really like that. Um, I think uh, often we say things like, oh, this is the new normal. This is what climate change has done as if kind of this is the end of the story, but absolutely not. As long as we keep on emitting greenhouse gases, we keep making the world warmer and we keep making these natural disasters more frequent and more severe. So mm, overall, I really like the, the tone. Um, there were some big missteps. Um, I think I'm gonna give Beyonce a C. Oh my God, what a ridiculous sentence. <laughs> Who has ever given Beyonce a C for anything? Yeah, uh, I feel uh, very out of place grading Beyonce like that, but I'm sorry. Yeah, let's just move on before I think about what I've done anymore. Okay, now onto um, another absolute queen, which is Jane Fonda. Okay, let's see what Jane Fonda has to say. If we keep going the way we're going, it's gonna be a, a real catastrophe. This is not Jane Fonda saying that, you know, what do I know? It's 99% of climate scientists and NASA and, even the World Bank are saying we have to do something or it's going to be a huge catastrophe. And Okay, so um, here Jane Fonda is talking about the, the consensus among scientists on climate change, which certainly is very high. Um, now, there have been um, studies which try and quantify how, how many climate scientists um, agree about climate change. And specifically what they tend to look at is... Um, climate scientists agreeing that climate change is happening and is caused by humans. And the standard figure is 97%, although the authors of that study say that in recent years, that percentage of climate scientists has gone up to 99%. Um, now, uh, I don't know if that's the most useful metric. Um, what I think is more important is uh, the other point that Jane Fonda brings up, which is the organizations, um, these really important, respected, diverse organizations agree that climate change is happening. Um, and that absolutely is true. If basically any respected uh, neutral science, scientific organization you could think of from anywhere in the world um, agrees that climate change is happening um, and is caused by humans. The something means we have to stop drilling for fossil fuel, expanding the use of fossil fuels. We. We have the solution, it's there, they, it works, and that's renewable energy. It's job intensive, we can do it, we can afford it. Um, it can put people to work in jobs that are healthy and, and dignified. Um, so here, a couple of points. The first, um, you know, we know what we need to do to stop it. Um, stop expanding use of fossil fuels. That is actually just the beginning. We need to actually get rid of the use of fossil fuels and get it to the point where we're, we're not emitting anything and we're not really using fossil fuels except for absolutely essential things. And then the other point about um, job creation, I think that's a really important point. I think often um, the politicians who deny climate change or deny the need for action on climate change say that they're doing it to protect jobs, but actually um, using renewables can create a great many jobs. So not only creating jobs, but creating relatively safe, uh, clean jobs relative to say coal mining which is incredibly dangerous, um, incredibly unhealthy, and incredibly difficult labor. Okay, so next. When I found out that President Obama gave permission for Shell Oil to drill in the Arctic, I, it's like the bottom of my heart dropped out. Now, I think this is really great and really important. I think there's often this attitude that, um, especially in America, that, you know, the Republicans are bad on climate change and the Democrats are good on climate change and certainly the Republicans are terrible on climate change and the Democrats are better. But um, Obama certainly did some bad things when it came to climate change. He certainly uh, pushed um, the uh, access to fossil fuels really hard. He's someone who talks a really good talk. He, he says, 
you know how much he cares about climate change, how big an issue it is. Um, and then the actions often don't really match up with that. Um, now, uh, I would say that Joe Biden, who's running for, uh, for president and he's the Democratic candidate for president, his climate policy is very different to anything Obama did and is much more radical. And that's something I hope to make a video about in the future. But still, I'm pleased that um, Jane Fonda is drawing attention to the fact that, um, you know, it's not just the bad guys who are bad on climate change. We look at the, the especially in Canada, we're looking at the, you know, our... Uh, the importance in our economy of, of developing the uh, oil sands. The, the modus operandi of the corporations that rely on fossil fuels is they have to keep growing and growing and growing and, they, and, and so they say, no, we need this, we need this. We don't need this, we can't afford it. We can't afford it financially and we can't afford it from a health point of view. Now, I think this is just a fantastic point <laughs> from Jane Fonda here. Um, we often talk about um, the costs of acting on climate change, um, and a lot of politicians who are skeptical about climate change or skeptical about acting on climate change use this as an excuse that it'll just be too expensive to act. But we don't talk enough about the cost of doing nothing, the cost of inaction, how much climate change will cost us um, through natural disasters, through forcing people through the, from their homes, through affecting our ability to grow enough food, through access to water, how all these things will affect our health and us financially, as Jane Fonda says. Um, I think she makes a really fantastic point, uh, drawing attention to the cost of doing nothing. And I really couldn't have said that um, better myself. So I think overall, did a fantastic job um, always some room for improvement. So I'm gonna give Jane something to aim for in the future so she doesn't rest on her laurels. Uh, so let's give Jane an A minus and move on to our final celebrity. And what a celebrity, we've got Prince William here. Okay, let's see what Prince William has to say. Africa's rapidly growing human population is predicted to more than double by 2050. There is no question that this increase puts wildlife and habitats under enormous pressure. Okay, so I think it really draws attention to the wrong issues when we focus on population as if that is the driving force behind climate change. And the reason I say that is because the average British person emits um, as much as five average uh, residents of Africa. I don't have that stat for the average uh, Duke of Cambridge. Um, but I presume that he emits a lot more even than the average British person based on his lifestyle. So I think to point the finger at people who actually use much, uh, much less, I think is uh, really pointing the finger at the wrong place. And I think it's important we start by pointing the finger at ourselves. Um, and that is a super complicated topic, the topic of overpopulation and also a super sensitive topic. And it's a topic that I'm planning on coming back to actually very soon um, in a video that I've, um, I've got planned. Um, so if you want to make sure you don't miss that, um, make sure that you are subscribed. And I, I really enjoyed making this video. Um, hopefully it was enjoyable to watch. If uh, you have any celebrities who you've seen talking about climate change, either positively or negatively, they've done a good job or bad, leave that in the comments below. Um, and yeah, if they're enough, then I'll definitely make another one of these videos. Uh, yeah, make sure you're subscribed and uh, thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, bye.